So in this Kickstarter campaign I want to demonstrate to you a quite versatile device for any hobbyists, perhaps even professional electronics lab. And that is what I call the RLC box. This is the prototype I built many years ago for my own demands. And the main functionality is mostly self-explaining. You have three rotary switches, all in all with 24 positions. And because each rotary switch has two planes, which you can switch between what I called initially the low and high values, you have all in all 48 values for each resistor, inductor or capacitor. So you can dial in, for example, in the resistor, switch any value between 1 ohms and 68 mega ohms. And so it happens quite often in doing electronics development or test and repair work that you just need to determine experimentally the value of a resistor, inductor or capacitor in a circuit so that your circuit works perfect. And of course you can try to build up your test circuit on a breadboard and to whack in component after component uh, until you found the right one. But it's much easier and faster just to have a rotary switch to simply dial in any value you want. Now I had to make a compromise between the total range that can be covered with 48 positions and the step size and I opted for the highest range. As you can see the resistors go from 1 ohms to 68 mega ohms. In the final version it will be 100 mega ohms. And the step size is around 50% or it is the E6 series for components. For example when you start at 10 ohms the next step is 15 ohms then 22, 33, 47, 68 and then the next decade starts. So all in all, we get eight decades of resistance, seven decades of inductance. The reason is simply, it makes no sense to start, for example, at one micro Henry, as I did here, because even the leads from the rotary switch to the selector switch and to these two switches, which I'll discuss in a minute, even that have a higher inductance than 10 nano Henry's. So the inductors go from 10 nano Henry up to 150 milli Henry's. The reason is we can't get any further because finding inductors above 100 or 150 milli Henry's is quite difficult, at least in a size that fits into this box. So the inductor range is limited to seven decades from 10 nano Henry's to 150 milli Henry's. And the capacitors, they go from 10 picofarad. It doesn't make sense to go below 10 picofarad, also because of the parasitic capacitance between the leads and the switch planes. From 10 picofarads up to 1000 microfarads. So, and if you switch here these three or triple throw switches to the what is still here called independent and in fact it means isolated positions. Uh, then you can tap off the resistance, the inductance and the capacitance without any connections between the three component switches. And of course I choose the best quality or the best compromise of quality for the resistors, inductors and capacitors. For example, in the final version, the resistors will be all 1% SMD 1206 size resistors, except for any the resistances above 10 mega ohms, they will have only 5% accuracy and they will have 500 milliwatts power rating. The inductors I choose so that the series resistance remains below 1 ohms and the current rating above 1 amps for as long as possible. And then at the higher inductance values, this goes of course down because, for example, a 100 milli Henry inductor in a manageable size for this box here, it has a few dozen ohms series resistance and only around 100 milliamps current rating. Depending on when you watch this video, um, there will already be the list with the ratings and tolerances of the components be available for download as well as the chosen types. 
The selection has already been made, it just takes some time to polish up the manual, etc. And for the capacitors, up to 68 nanofarads, we choose 5% ceramic COG or NPO capacitors because they have the best radio frequency properties. And above that comes the next decade from 100 nanofarad to 1 microfarad will be high quality Vima, a German capacitor company. It will be high quality polypropylene film capacitors. And from 1 microfarad to 10 microfarad, it will be also high quality Mylar film capacitors. And from then on, film capacitors simply would become too large and nearly unavailable. So from 10 microfarad up to 1000 microfarad, it will be electrolytics and all capacitors will be rated for at least 50 volts voltage rating. So, and this piece is designed also to work reasonably well for frequencies above the audio range. First of all, because as far as possible SMD components were chosen, there are only point to point wirings from the selector switches to the function switches and then to the what here are still simple banana jacks, but I will later show you in the final version we will use binding posts. And now what makes this thing still more versatile than simply having a variable resistor, inductor and capacitor is that you can connect the three component types with these two switches. As you see now they are still in the position independent, which means each component is disconnected from its neighbors. But for example, the simplest configuration or combination is if you put the RC switch into series, then what you get is a low pass or a high pass filter, depending on how you connect your source and your load to the, to the banana jacks. And not only are this is the simplest combination, already that's quite versatile, you quite often have to determine the cutoff frequency of a high pass or low, low pass filter experimentally and this goes just with the turning of a switch or in that case of two switches to find a suitable combination. But because we also have an inductor much more combinations are possible and as you can see for example one is a bandpass filter I'll refocus this a bit. Excuse me for the crude printing here. This is nearly 10 years old and started as a hobby project. Here on, on the back, for example, I've already printed the original component values, including the parasitics. For example, the quality factor of the inductors, etc. And so we can, because we have the inductor and we can choose nearly every possible combination of the three components. We can also build not only 6 dB high pass and low pass filters but also 12 dB high pass and low pass filters as well as band stop and band pass filters and we can build serious and resonant RLC tank circuit. So any useful combination of these three components is manageable just with the push of these two three throw or triple throw switches. So and also again depending on when you watch this video the manual with all the combinations and how you have to set the switches and which of the terminals you have to use for the filter circuit, you will already be able to download that. And the version that, that you will later be able to buy from this Kickstarter campaign is already fully designed. It will be slightly larger as you can see when you com compare the two simply um, because we had to make little PCBs that attach to the rotary switches and this just to have a little more space and to make this more manageable for a low volume production. So th this will be the face, as you can see, the face of the enclosure of the box. As you can see, later will all completely be open source hardware. So after the campaign has successfully finished, you will be able to download all the files. And the only thing that is missing here are the component values here. 
So there will be two versions available. Um, the standard version will have these binding posts instead of the simple banana jacks in my prototype. And there will be a kind of high-end version which will use these high-quality Hirschmann or Hirschmann binding posts, even uh, with gold plating. These are the standard ones, but in the high-end version you will get them gold plated as well as a gold plated cover PCB, because this is only a printout uh, here. In fact, the finished product will have a PCB as the top cover, and the PCB will have gold plated traces and connections in the high-end version. But the proof is of course in the putting. And so let's make a demonstration uh, with the prototype of an RLC notch filter. You can see in the background a, a simulation with LT Spice with the value I've already dialed in, 10 ohms for the resistance and the parallel inductor and capacitor will have 100 microhenries and 100 nanofarad. And we just put the resistor in series with the LC and they are paralleled and now let's connect them to a function generator and an oscilloscope and see if reality matches the simulation. So these are the connections. We have a common pin here on the left, then in comes the signal from the function generator, in this case set to sweep mode here, and we tap off the output of the notch filter here and make the switch settings accordingly and the positions of the rotary switches. And if we now switch on the output of the function generator, you can see the typical, well it's not a very notchy notch filter, that's because we have the relatively low series resistance in the filter, which um, limits the Q factor, but if we select in a higher value you can not only see that the signal becomes higher, but also that the notch becomes narrower. And if you want to change the frequency, the center frequency of the notch filter, we just change either the inductance and you can see here it shifted to the left to lower frequencies or we change the capacitance just at the end of the range switches so I have to go so and here you can see we can shift it in steps of around 50% to each side of the center frequency. So that is a demonstration how you can have a tunable filter of course not continuously tunable but in steps of 50%. But that's one of the applications of a RLC box where you can connect all components individual to each other. So, and finally, all the design has already been made. The distributors have been chosen, the case has been chosen, the PCBs have been designed and tested. So you can be pretty sure that you will get a working device because it's not such a complicated design. But nevertheless, the components alone cost nearly 100 euros because it are all high quality components from reputable manufacturers like Vima for the capacitors or Fastron for the inductors. But I think the usefulness of this RLC box is worth the not so low price. But nevertheless, you later will be able to build one of your own when the design files will be published. And I appreciate, of course, every supporter if you want to support the project with five euros just to get it going or if you buy one of the RLC boxes. So during the campaign and later I will publish one or two more videos about what you can do with the RLC box demonstrating some lesser known configurations of resistance, inductance and capacitance. And so anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you support the project.